soul of the city. What is going on, St. Louis City fans? Welcome back to the second to last, unfortunately, episode of Soul of the City. For this season, uh, we just witnessed, Chris and I were in Kansas City, Kansas for this game. Uh, it was a 2-1 to one loss. It was truly an unfortunate display. A first half, not many chances created. Um, really kind of depressing way to go out. And this episode, while it's probably not going to be the most heartfelt and most positive episode you've ever heard, we've got some more positivity to come next week. But demons must be exorcised on this here episode after what we bore witness to um, in Children's Mercy Park this weekend on Sunday. Um, What do you guys have? I don't know. You might have seen some of the first touch crew me and riley on uh on tv and there was a moment in there where they screen capped it and they were like this man has nothing left in him (laughs) just we just looked we looked sad (laughs) defeated yeah um we started off the game way better than the first game um and i think the second half too we had a few we started off the second half well and we ended the game well but In the other stretches of the game, it was just all KC, and they were able to score. And, I mean, we we had one, but, I mean, it was a pretty lucky goal, I'd say. Um, So, yeah, just disappointing. We never looked like winning this series in any of the games. At any point. No. It was just really just flamed out. 180 minutes of just sadness. And, I mean, truthfully, it's been like – 500 plus minutes of despair for St. Louis City over the course of a month and a half. I mean, yeah. we've scored two goals in almost two months and <laughs> it is just it's we've really fallen apart in our in our at the end of what was a extremely impressive season that we were extremely happy to be a part of. It just seemed like we we grew content with the records that we you know, created broke, but there wasn't there wasn't much trophy winning desire in the squad. Yeah, it seemed like once we won the West, they celebrated and something something changed. Like they were just they were like, "All right, job done," you know. Yep. Berkey was talking about how he's tired, which I think about that all the time and I'm like, is it it's it's like less games, honestly, than what he was playing with Champions League and league games in Bundesliga like it, or it, maybe it's the same. Like, is it? I mean, there's more travel in the okay, U.S. Okay, that's true. Mm-hmm. That and is true. Just to play through the summer months that are all, especially in St. Louis, really hot. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. I feel like he has a right to be tired. Yeah, <laughs> he's kept us in games single handedly. And I went back, and he truthfully doesn't have that many Champions League minutes with Borussia Dortmund either. It's I like think pretty they said slim pickings. Thirteen starts. Yeah. Yeah, which I mean, is still impressive, but for a player in the MLS, yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what? I'm just glad that we've got his contract locked down for a few more years, and he's going to be sticking around. I think he's. Will he gonna, be? What if somebody's like? I comes don't think no one's buying him out. Okay, yeah. twenty five mil. Do you take it? Twenty five mil? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I take twenty five mil. Yeah, I. I do you don't take, know, though. Do you take 15? Isn't the record MLS transfer fee like 20 mil for Pepe? I wish we had a fact checker right now. Yeah, I'm not sure. Or a laptop. Um, But, dude, there was really... I'm trying to think of any positive chances we had. All first, the- I mean, first 15 minutes, the press was working. But that's because everybody was rested, right? Yeah. I would say even more than that. I felt like Indy Vasilev was playing fairly dangerously, dangerous enough to where he was drawing fouls and creating. A, we had a lot of free kick opportunities mm-hmm. in those first 15, 20 minutes. And Leuven did uh, his best to kind of not put any any good delivery in. Today. Yeah. I, I really felt like that was one of his worst, like, dead ball delivery games ever. He had There was one corner late in the game. That was literally shanked out. Of- I did. So I, I went back and watched the full game. If you go back and watch that moment, his plant foot 
creates a divot like the size of his head yeah like the ground gives out underneath him i did see that so i i went back and i will give him some some slack on On that that specific one but it's true the rest of his corners were all terrible and And his free kicks were all terrible we had quite a few i wish let's look up the number if you can pull up the numbers on that but every single one um yeah, Indy and Leuven were the only two that had any link up play going on in the first half from what we saw on our side. And that was that was it, man. Like what was was there one chance? There wasn't even a chance in the first half that I remember distinctly. I think it, our best chance happened in the second half. Yeah, all of the best chances happened after we subbed on Celio and got a different look up front. Yeah, yeah. I guess we should talk about the changes to the starting eleven for this mm-hmm. game too. So yeah. Yeah. we saw Sam Adeneron come in, which I think everyone liked to see. Yeah, yeah. And it didn't. It just didn't work. Though he was silent. Yeah, yeah he, he was a did ghost absolutely mode. nothing the whole game. Yep. Yeah, which I mean, maybe it's just poor delivery to him. I don't know. Probably it's not only his fault, you know. That's probably harsh. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's and the comment Taylor Tolman was was saying that as well that zero involvement from a dinner on in the first half, and he was happy with the sub that Carmel made right at the beginning of the second. Yeah, um, yeah, and then the back line change changes significantly. Ky- Kyle Hebert in for Markanic, uh, Yarrow in for Nielsen, Nielsen and then Akil Watts for Jake Nervinsky, which. The, the stats said that that was a, a solid lineup for us. They have six wins and zero losses with that back line. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, they were unprepared, I think. And Akil Watts being one of them, Shallowy was giving him the runs all night. The business. And the worst, part, the, business. the worst part about it is that even if you put Jake Nervinsky there, it's going to be the exact same thing. Yeah. Because the 1v1 defending at right back for our team is is – ghastly i don't have the numbers on it but just eye test when you watch that game most of sporting kc's attacking chances came through that that left side for them and our our right back position yeah there was one moment uh it was on the goal or no it was right before the goal where polito just rounds akil watts and it looks so and he gets shallow it was shallow shallow yeah he get he gets a shot off just looked bad, dude. He like didn't look MLS ready. He looked no. like he was. He didn't wake up until like ten minutes before the game started. Yeah, yeah. And I want to be hopeful for him. I don't know. Like the one difficult thing is, is who knows what Lutz von and Stiel is really thinking. Sure, where sure. he's gonna get what league he would ever pick a right back from. It's it's so hard to know. And so if we have to move forward on the basis that this is gonna be the team that we bring into next season. You just have to hope that Akil Watts is going to learn from moments like this and mm-hmm. continue to improve his game. Um, because I felt like there was moments in the season where he looked really good getting forward and he had good 1v1 defensive moments. I thought he was probably better than Jake Nervinsky. Um, but it's still just not enough. I probably would have been mad if Jake Nervinsky had rolled out there for the yeah. second nine in a row. But then, like, <laughs> it doesn't change anything. You're right, Like you said that earlier. I think... Starting Akil Watts there is definitely a more attack-minded move by Carnell because mm-hmm. um, he's definitely like better with the ball in terms of passing and maybe crossing. I feel like Jake still has some good crosses, mm-hmm. but Jake's definitely a better 1v1 defender, I think. Really? Yeah. I think just like he is more physical. Um, I don't think he's faster maybe, but... He just knows where to be on defense better than Akil Watts, it seems to me. I feel like we're comparing bottom of the barrel fish <laughs> right now. Yeah. Like <laughs> probably. Yeah. Like pick your poison. And you yeah. kind of want to bring in offensive minded because when you're taking out Markanic for Kyle Hebert, you're yeah. getting one v one defending. And we yeah. saw that Johnny Russell maybe only beat Hebert one time that entire night. He was pretty much lights out, I would mm-hmm. have to say, uh playing left back. But it's hard for him to, to carry the ball forward. He had a couple moments up in that left wing with Vasilev and uh, I forget who else. But it's just it never amounted to anything. In Celio, yeah. it just never amounted to anything. Yeah. <sighs> it's like you can tell the defenders are like, okay, let Kyle Hebert get the ball. Like when he had it, they wouldn't press him. They'd be like, okay, let him cross it. What's he going to do? Because yeah. they know that he can't 
<laughs> like you could tell when Heber had the ball, he's like, please let me pass this short. I do not want to cross the ball. I almost feel, I mean, there was a lot of slander going on in the group chat last <laughs> night about, and on Twitter about like Carnell out, like we're burning the whole house down. Right. I'm not personally in that camp. Nope. But, um, I feel for Carnell because he's handcuffed. He's trying to put out a lineup and he has no wing backs on mm-hmm. the right or left side that have, they either have attacking prowess and they don't have defensive knowledge or like ball control or ability to one one v one defend, or they have one v one defending and no attacking prowess. So you're handcuffed. Like yeah. what do you do? You're 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 like trying to to play with your hand behind your back. And especially when you look at Sporting KC's fullbacks like Davis and Ndembe, like yeah. they're both so much better than either like anyone we could field at those positions and i think you know that definitely hurt us in these two games yeah it helps casey's style of play as well like those wingbacks being able to to hold possession fine passes and not even have to worry that much about getting crosses and i mean in dembe he scored his two only career goals versus st louis and has looked like a like a truly brilliant left like left wing back mm-hmm. the way that he's been getting up the field. But like yeah, sing his praises, but I fucking hate him. <laughs> <laughs> like he was dude, that second half, they came out and they knew what their game plan was. They were up by a goal. They're like, We're gonna we're gonna roll around on the ground and stay on the ground. We're gonna wait for the training staff to come out and attend to every fake knock that we get and it's going to take it's going to take 30 minutes i swear we were on the ground they were on the ground for like 20 minutes so Real, realistically 20 minutes let's break down casey's first goal so it was shallowy Ndembe, and polito all in the left hand corner watts getting cooked watts is out there yarrow comes out to help stroud is in the mix blooms in there and then yeah bloom is finally checking over tim parker's finally checking over they're like playing keep away in our in our corner ultimately Ndembe like breaks out to the top of the box all space polito plays him a beautiful ball blum is just watching polito with the ball he breaks free yep slots it back post it was a great finish. Yeah. Yeah. Matt, uh, some absolute Matt Doyle, I think his name is. He's some MLS pundit said that Berkey that says that Berkey saves that at the no. beginning of the season. No, dude, that's difficult, man. That's, that's just, he was wide open. He's inside the box. Like he picks a corner it's like on a tee. It's in the side net. Yeah. yeah. Low, hard driven. Like, what are you going to do with that? No way. Berkey's saving that. That we, dude is an absolute fool. I'm sorry. And we have definitely contributed. St. Louis really has dug themselves quite the uh, internet hole, <laughs> the internet grave, you could say, uh, for themselves for this moment. And it has shown brightly that not just Kansas City, not just Chicago, Cincinnati hates our guts. Nash- LAFC hates our guts. Nashville definitely hates First Touch Media. They hate First Touch Media, but they did actually sing praises of St. Louis on Twitter. So Okay. I'm hopeful that they have forgotten about that <laughs> moment in our inaugural season. It was uh, just a misunderstanding. Yeah, it, it truly, truly was. It truly was. But, um, man, like <laughs> St. Louis was punching. I feel like St. Louis was punching above their weight class all season long. Hey, but at least we were punching up, you know? Yeah. Better to punch up than punch down. I agree. Yeah. Um. <laughs> God, it just hurts so bad. It was terrible. To get blown out at home, and then you have to, like, we went out there to Kansas City, and it's, I have not seen, and if anybody knows of any away fixtures where thousands of fans from an opposite MLS team travel, I feel like I've never seen that in MLS before. When you go onto the live feed and you just see an entire section of the opposite team's colors, I'm still so proud of that, and yeah. like it sucks that that had to be our last moment. But I'm glad that we went down with everybody around us. I might be biased because I was in the thick of it, but I didn't really hear Sporting KC's chants. I definitely heard St. Louis like all game long. So I, you could definitely hear on the TV like after we scored that goal. Yeah, like you heard the STL chants. Um, I will say though. It did did seem like Casey was pretty loud mm. yesterday, and the, the the commentators kept saying, "Yeah, you know, this is only the fifth time in history that KC has sold three thousand more tickets than the listed capacity, and the fire marshal what? won't let anyone else in the building." 
Yeah, that's what they kept saying. Uh, How is that even possible? I, I think they know. have a standing room section behind um, the supporter section. Yeah. yeah. Also, the supporter section is whack. Like, they don't have a full stand. They have, like, half of our stand. And then they have a wall. And their TIFO was whack. So, fuck you. <laughs> and one of their supporters groups is called Drainage Pond SC, which I think is the dumbest supporter group name of all time. <laughs> They're literally named after fucking sewage. Drainage Pond? Drainage Pond. They're named after literally a sewer system. Hmm. Stupid. Dumb and as hell. Their TIFO was one, micro. <laughs> two, it said, we're alive. I don't, I don't know. It After they do it win the me. first game, that doesn't really like. If they had lost the first game, then maybe. It was like a Frankenstein's monster, and uh, was, I don't know. I don't it get was, it. I didn't it was get pretty it. Lame. Yeah, it's not that exciting. Um, so that was the first half. Yeah, they scored with in 30, injury time. Thirty seconds left in yeah, that half, and I was I was talking to Riley and Garrett next to us, and I was like we just got to get through this half and we'll be good. You know, like we'll get some rest and then we'll press in the second half. And then at the end of the game, it's just down to like who wants it more. If we get through that half mm. without allowing a goal, I think we, we win. feel a lot better. That might be the delusion, because but it might be a little bit of delusion, but I do feel like right at the beginning of the half, Celio comes on and we just get a completely different look yeah. of how the team can play. Like we still have a high press like mentality but we're not just dumping constantly because I feel like that's all we did in the first half. Klaus was guilty of it. Everyone was guilty of it. Literally just pick your head up and boot it. I feel like the first 15 minutes, that kind of worked. I agree. And I think that with having two forwards, especially two big, fast forwards, like that's not a horrible style of play, especially because you don't have that extra player in the midfield to like do short passes and build mm -hmm. up that way. But... I remember thinking to myself the first half, like, I don't think Sam Adenron has won a single header the entire mm -hmm. game. And Klaus won, like, maybe one or two. Mm -hmm. I was okay with the dump and chase mentality because, honestly, the first five games that we won in a – like, off the rip that we won, we didn't have, like, an established – we weren't established. So that was kind of what we were doing. And we would, we would dump the ball down. It would get headed by either our player or the opposing player – into the like the middle line like middle third kind of area and it was chaos ball and Leuven or Stroud would pick it up and that was that works in the MLS you know maybe one thing that I saw that changed now that you bring that up is that it seemed like we just wanted to flick every aerial on mm -hmm. we didn't want to drop anything back into our midfield it was mm -hmm. all just trying to continue to go forward towards the end definitely I, I felt so. like it was the same way in the first half um, but Celio comes on in the second half and I feel like we're playing so much more directly to him, like letting him try to create chances. And it was a, such a better look. It was working. We, like we were getting deliveries into the box, even though all of a sudden, like we forgot how to make back post runs near post run. Nobody was making very many runs. Well, we had also more deliveries into the box with only Klaus up there than we did with both Sam and Klaus, which is like, Okay, if we're going to cross, like, yeah, sure, sub Celio on, but don't take Sam out. Like, he's the the tallest person on the field, probably. Yeah. Well, it seemed like when Celio came on, they stayed with, like, the four, well, it was like a 4-4-2 four, four, with a diamond midfield. So, it was weird that Celio was just, like, left to be the... He was kind of on an the, island out there. He was a striker as well, but he should have he been a winger. He kind of was, like, roaming around, He should have been a winger. He, he definitely, pretty much was. He was wide, for yeah. sure. Eventually, he was, once we got more subs in, like, once we got Joa in and we got Ostrak in, then he moved out wider. Off the rip, he was... It was the same formation, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, Celio yeah, can take on players. That's what, I, that's what we were missing. Like, we would... Because Stroud would get the ball... And it would infuriate me how he would drive <laughs> forward or get the ball in a, in a, like a forward position, and then not take on his man. He would just he would. I stop, don't want him to even try it I or, don't, or I don't play a pass. He like <sighs> it was so infuriating. I do think there were some mixed reviews on hit on Stroud's performance. Would you guys think overall? I get why he's in the lineup. We I mean we always yeah. talk about it. Like he's the press god. He's that's what he's here yeah. for. But like, man, like when you need a goal, <laughs> he's not it. He's yeah. just he's has no attacking bag. Yeah. No, I think that's a pretty good summary, honestly, because he was definitely putting in the work um yeah. for the press and I think he won the ball back 
pretty often. Um, I don't know, but yeah, it's just everyone was saying like I was watching with Marlon and both of us were like, we need to see Joe Akini on for Stroud yeah. immediately yeah. second half, and that eventually happened. But I would have liked to see that at forty five minutes. Yeah, I I would have been here for it too, and that's why that's why I feel like Celio was such a great substitution because. I do feel like when like and it wasn't always like this either. It's just been this last span where like if the two of them are playing together, it is dump and chase and it's like there is no like attempt to create any kind of solid through ball. It's always just hoof it up. Mm -hmm. And with when Giochini comes on, it's like I feel like it's refreshed and we get some different looks. We're, we're trying to play through balls on the ground, like split lines. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't. I wanted to see Klaus and Joaquini start together, truthfully. Yeah. Yeah. Because there were there once was a time when that combination was lethal. Yep. Yep, it sure was. Celio, uh, I mean, I feel like the best chance of the game was didn't even for St. Louis City didn't even result in a goal. The best chance of the game was Celio crossed into Klaus from and the left side. From the left side, Klaus might have been offsides. I don't know. I gotta look at it again. But uh, I don't know how Timelia saves that. It was just like pure reflexes. That was, was the best chance all game. It was a great cross and it was a great header because Klaus he jumped up and he headed it down. Yeah, like basically to the corner, I'd say. But yeah, Melia just really good save by him. Um. And yeah, it, at that point it was one zero. If we score that, I feel really good about our chances because we mm -hmm. had the momentum. Like that was the first twenty minutes of the first half. Um, yeah, I mean, we looked really good up until that chance, basically. And then they, it might have been the very next play. They came, they came back immediately. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they had that through ball into. It was from I think it was from Russell to Kinda, and mm -hmm. then Kinda sweat goal to. Yeah, the FIFA Pope. goal. Who was, who was no, it was shallow, shallow. Yeah, shallowy. Shallowy. Yeah, shallowy. Because he came over and sallied in front of us. And I mean, and I had a crumpled up beer can, and <laughs> I wanted to pull a new jersey and throw it at him so badly, <laughs> but I didn't because I have restraint and I understand that I could harm somebody if I did that physically, and that's not cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, credit to, mature. Credit to Berkey. He like actually almost out of I don't know how but he almost saved it well Shelly put it like kind of towards the middle he didn't really pick the corner but yeah. it still would have been a wonder save if Berkey had gotten to that mm -hmm. yeah I mean he hit it with his hand but he just couldn't get it out didn't have enough muscle on it that took the uh that took the air out of the supporter section for a little bit yep but um the Celio like the Celio goal <laughs> really had us feeling good again like around the 80 was the 86th minute he scores that uh in the post game press conference he's he was like it was a shot <laughs> <laughs> he's no. like i'm trying he was like i'm just trying to create chaos and i'm like oh man you're crossing that back post yeah for sure. no doubt <laughs> it was definitely a cross because watching it from the opposite side i was like oh man it's like it's over like it's it's over like it's it just dinks off the back post and and in we were going wild great goal and then you felt hopeful because you're like all right they've been crying on the ground for 20 minutes they gave us 12 i'm like well we had an opportunity to get back in this game we had like 18 minutes because and i think back honestly in. what happened to like because we definitely had like the momentum the last 20 minutes including overtime mm -hmm. and i think it's because their center back rosero got hurt and mm -hmm. that new guy came on and it seemed like every time the ball would go to him he would just like blindly kick at it or head it as hard as he could um to nobody like he would not make the pass even if he had time he would just get it out of there and we would often win the ball back from that yeah um so yeah that definitely allowed us to keep it in their half and get some chances. Uh, I like that Tim Parker kind of stayed up for the last, the last five, five minutes, 10 minutes. Tim Parker, right wing card. Yep. <laughs> Imagine yeah. he scores and ties it up. Hey, that's an informed FIFA card, right wing. For Tim Parker. <laughs> he is our biggest game player. Welcome so to the true. USA <laughs> squad building challenge. <laughs> We've been like 75 rated in form. <sighs> oh man. Yeah. Man, Tim Parker is inevitable, though. I do love that guy. 
and I hope he sticks around maybe for one more season. I think he's a true leader. I think he's like, I think Taylor Tolman said it that he's like one of MLS's best players. Would you guys maybe agree with that? I feel like I would not start him in the back to center back pairing if I was the coach in this game. Uh, I don't know. I feel like if I started the season, he would not have been my first choice. Hmm. I would have really liked Yarrow and Nielsen if they're everyone's healthy. Obviously, Nielsen wasn't healthy at first. Um, and like Tim Parker obviously has qualities that he brings to the table. Like he's the guy who's going to, you know, hurt someone if necessary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like he's going to win the headers. But I just think that like Yarrow and Nielsen, like they both have better positioning. They both have better ball playing abilities. I feel like Tim Parker's distribution is actually really good. And like that in that Kansas City game, he was spraying passes while we had all of that possession. But but the problem was is that he would spray passes and then nothing would result of it because nobody could create anything. <clears throat> I just feel like like and in this game too, like Yarrow like I feel like Yarrow normally has a lot of good communication. Like I see him kind of barking orders out there. But in this one, like he headbutts Giochini from behind. <laughs> yeah. And that moment I was just like, he really did not have that great of a game. I he he looked kind of unsettled and then there was the man, that first uh Ndagby goal. What's his name? Ndagby. Ndembe. 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 Yeah. That first Ndembe goal, he's like uh, he just can't shut it down. I just I mean, I, I can't be upset with what Carnell put out there. I still think that he's second best center back option. I feel like Nilsson is good. He just really – it never panned out for him, unfortunately. I think it's because he didn't get a full season with the squad. Yeah. I also think it was a whole it. thing of form. Like, I don't think it was just him. Like, the commentator of the first KC game was like, yeah, Nilsson has played the past seven games, and we've only won one of them. Yeah. And it's like, that's okay, a, yeah, that's kind of cherry-picking a stat. I agree. Like, it's yeah. not just Nielsen's fault. It's like, true. The entire team. But also, Tim Parker was two for seven accurate long balls in this game. In this game. Yeah, that's pretty bad. And that then Berkey bad. was 10 for 32 accurate long balls. And I felt like Berkey... <laughs> 10 for 32. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, that was my next point, is Berkey was doing a lot of the dump and chase distribution, yeah. especially towards the last 20 minutes of that game, because yeah. everybody was pushed Way up. up. We put Ostrock in, we had Celio in, we had Joa in, like... It was all hands on deck. And there there would be the occasion. There, I remember there was one Berkey long ball that he pings like basically to the other touchline, but it stays in slow rolls to Klaus, mm -hmm. who goes to play a back post ball, but and nobody's, nobody's there. there. Nobody's there. Yeah. yeah there it should have been Celio. Mm -hmm. but, but also, he's like probably the shortest person on the field. So yeah. even if it does make it to him. Yeah. I don't know. <sighs> hmm. Hmm. Yep, that's the end of our season just like that. That's really crazy. They just laid a fucking egg for two games. It really I blame the first game, man. You can't you just I blame the first game. You can't go down four one. At home. That's the first game sets the tone for the whole series. Mm -hmm. So Man. Dude. Yeah. It feels a little un I'm a little shell shocked that it's that it's over. Me too. It doesn't feel like it should be. But, you know, we go back and we look at the statistics and we look at everybody's takes who are like, man, St. Louis is overperforming expectations. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, this series really does spell out that in a nutshell, that we overperformed quite frequently. Yeah, someone said we, the second, the past eight games, or I guess ten games, we were regressing to the mean, and mm, yeah. that one really hurt my feelings. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, <laughs> you felt as that a math one. nerd. <laughs> Ouch! Ooh. Damn. Yeah, we were high standard deviation for a long time there, and mm. now you're right. We're back closer to the mean, and honestly, we're not the greatest expansion team of all time. <laughs> yeah, Chicago Fire. They won the MLS Cup in their inaugural season. Damn. Well, was that MLS 1.0? Yep. 
Don't care. Asterix. Yeah. I they went and un, they Mickey replied Mouse trophy. <laughs> I literally replied a picture of Mickey Mouse to this one guy who said that, and I was like, "This trophy," because they were like, "Oh, you guys are never gonna. I never want to hear greatest expansion team of all time ever again. Look at this. This is a trophy." And yeah, I just like I, six teams of them West. I replied probably. this trophy in a picture of Mickey Mouse because I yeah. mean that's really what it is. Twelve team league. Uh, who, I, who is a uh, wanker watch? For um, you. Ndembe. I have, yeah, I was like, it's got to be in Dembe. Honestly, shallowy too. Like <sighs> Johnny Russell, man, he is not a big game player. They were saying the past seven playoff games, no goals, no assists. Mm. He's not a big game player. I say Wanker Watch for Ndembe because he was on the ground for so long. Like, unnecessarily, then got up and then just kept playing. Yep. This can't, or the St. Louis crowd booed him. Every time he touched the ball, could you guys hear that on the? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Some of the times, not every time, probably. I, because well, then the Kansas City fans caught onto it and started cheering every time he touched the ball. Yeah. Hmm. You know who's not a wanker, unfortunately, Gaddy Kinda. Nah. <sighs> he kind of ran it again. Yeah. He just tore us up. Yeah. Both games. He really did, and it's really unfortunate for mo- many ways. I just. I did go back and watch that one that he was on the ground in the second half for a good amount of time, and his knee did like flex oh, back yeah. on that chance. Didn't Yarrow or somebody like hit his leg down and it kind of like hyperextended? Yep, yep. And so I felt yeah. for that one. But in Dembe's, there was zero con- actually Crybaby. zero contact. Crybaby. But I can never. I will always say the true wanka is the one who comes and celebrates in front of the opposite fans. I hated that. That I just, hated that. Oh man, and he's homegrown for KC too. Yeah, he's like now their second all-time goal scorer in the playoffs or something. I hope Dynamo or Ralph Salt Lake just bounce him. I cannot stand to see them progress, and it sucks because they are Kansas City are a good team. They look solid. Vermes has brought them back from the death. Everybody in KC was like, Vermi's out. They were so over it because he's like the puppet master in Kansas City, running their, running the front office and run also the manager on the, on the pitch. He has too much power. Yeah, it'll crumble. Don't worry, we're waiting. <laughs> we will be there. Yeah, we're Thanks. not. Listen, we didn't beat the little bro allegations this season, <laughs> no, and really I hate didn't. to say it. We really and didn't. it's so messed oh. up too because like here in America. You win first place in your conference doesn't mean anything unless you can at least break round one. That like the first in the West is completely forgotten at this point. It's over. It's, it's com- done. It's true. I don't even. I really don't feel good about it. No, I don't either. I don't <laughs> because it, it feels like <laughs> it doesn't an, matter. Yeah, we overperformed. We got the first place, but we didn't do anything with it. It amounted to nothing. It's we tr- have we have some records under our belt. That's cool. We'll be remembered for that. It is true, though. We overperformed for a whole season. So, like, it's not just, like, a one-game fluke. It's true. You know what I mean? Like, it's at least some some semblance of a pattern of, you know, we, we deserve a little bit of respect. I would rather sneak into the playoffs and then win round one against KC than win the West and then lose like this. That's how I feel. It's all about the playoffs. It is about the playoffs in America. It's all that's all that matters. There's just no like I feel like there's really no foreseeable way, especially looking at our form even more than just like the last month. Like I think we could go back like three months and we could probably say that we weren't up to the task. I mean, but when we beat we beat Sporting four one at home, and I'm like hell yeah, give it give a Sporting KC in the first round. I want that. Just like. Really crushed the rivalry, you know, put it to bed, and then it just turned on its head. Right it is there. interesting that the lineup was very different from that game compared to the playoff game at home. Casey's lineup was significantly different. I don't think Kinda played in that in that game. Yeah, they were mm. at full strength in the playoffs here. Yep. Mm. Yeah, I feel like we also didn't talk about Vasilev or Leuven. Um and Vasilev had a great game. Yeah, I, would say. I think he did Great. too. Yeah, way better than the first uh, playoff game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The that's first a one, low bar. <laughs> yeah, he was yeah. ass the first game, let's yeah. be honest. But yeah, I thought he looked really good. They were talking about better. 
like how his role kind of changed because game one we're playing like basically three in the front with Indy like almost right wing he's like right he's like pretty high up playing in that game and in this game he's playing more of an eight like side by side with Leuven Mm -hmm. and it worked out a lot better for him and I'm ready to retract my Vasilev as a winger take it's not true anymore I'm over it he is a midfielder could be a 10 could be a 10 I like him at the eight, though. Luton played the ten. Seemed like this game. I I thought so. Would you guys think of that good move, bad move? I mean, he's like I f- I feel like on paper you think that's a good move, and then he like didn't really create. Yeah, he did chances. not have a great game. Yeah, mm-hmm. he didn't. He didn't. He got a yellow card early on, so I think he was kind of playing mm-hmm. scared for the rest of the game, and then. I don't know. Even the shots that he did take were just skied, or like the delivery that he he would put into the box was was hit too hard, and like uh, it just didn't work. Didn't work. It didn't. No, too afraid on duels. Like he does try to like. I feel like earlier on in the season he could get away with like beating a man, maybe beating two, and then playing it playing a ball. But he did not look up to it tonight. Yeah. He had one chance created, five shots off target. Yeah. When I look at this squad and how, like I said, we're playing handcuffed, it really draws into question. Now, I don't, this could be a Lutz von and Steel masterclass over a five year span, right? And we get, we get an MLS Cup in the next four, five, four years here, right? Mm-hmm. And that could, that could be the possibility. But in the first season, you have three designated player spots. Why don't we have three designated players? Yep. Especially whenever you go into this game and you're like having to pick your poison at right back or left back. Would you want to use a DP spot on a fullback? With the way that we've been playing, I feel like the answer is yes. It's tough to say. Because a lot of the game has been running through the fullbacks through the entirety of the season. If you're going to keep playing a 4-4-2 like we have. With a diamond. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like I just I we were talking about this leaving the stadium. I keep thinking back to um I think when the when the transfer market was still open, we had asked all, like on the podcast what position we would want to bolster. Most I said right back, I'm pretty sure. I, I'm I don't think I think it was you, Ian, and Milo. And Ian felt like a kilowatts was serviceable and yeah. that he would rather go after a winger. And I think We've seen it now that I think the right back really does need help. Yeah. It'd be cool, and we'll probably touch on this next episode more about, like, what we want to see next season. Like, who's going to who's gonna become, like, a bigger – have a bigger role next season. But it'd be really cool, and I see a potential for Kyle Hebert. If he works on his offensive game and he wins a right back or a left back spot, I literally don't care which one it is. But, like – if he can work on his crosses and his offensive game a little bit, like he's got a really solid foundation as a defender, yes. as a one v one defender. Yes, like there's potential. I don't want to see him leave is in he, the offseason. I don't know. We'll have to look at his contract. I don't think his contract is expiring. Okay, is he right footed? I want to say he's left footed. I'm unsure. <laughs> he's a defender. You can't tell <laughs> yeah. what, what, how he passes the ball. Yeah. Um, he really does have such solid potential. I agree with you on that wholeheartedly. That if he can get an offensive bag together, like he can, he will be starting left back for the entirety. And it's crazy because he was he was most state center back. Like he was, he played centrally, and that's how we started the season. We moved him out there after John Nelson shit a brick, <laughs> and he looked so he looked good. I think it's a testament to St. Louis City. Like it's early on, right? But it's a testament to St. Louis City's development that they had. They started three MLS Pro uh, defenders That's in very a true. playoff game. That's pretty crazy. That's so, so positive too. It's yeah. it's such a let's fun and steal mentality. Let's get some young guys, some development players. Let's let's give them a shot. Yeah, it didn't pan out. Of no. course, but <laughs> I mean, hey, we, we gave them their shot though. A for effort. A for the idea. Uh, this is already too positive for this podcast. It's supposed <sighs> to be all negative. Come on, no, we can be positive. Sometimes the cup is half full, even if it's half empty for the first 35 minutes of the episode. What uh does anything win us that game? Literally anything? Like <sighs> man. 
if Celio starts, if Celio starts out the gate, like starts the game, do we win that game? Am I grasping at straws and Maybe. I'm just like, I feel like if Sam com- comes on against tired legs, that's a better than what he was doing, mm-hmm. which was nothing the first half. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe Joe Keeney in there instead of him. I don't know. It's Joe say. Joe was super underutilized, like after League's Cup, after Klaus came back. Yeah, super under underutilized. Yeah, that shoulder injury. After that, it, something I I don't know what happened. Yeah, it just seemed like he was like the third choice for a really Suddenly. long time. And I mean, it made sense. A dinner on like he was in form. Yeah, super in form. Mm-hmm. Klaus is the guy. Klaus is him. I guess. Man. Yeah. We were just not good enough. Nope. We just weren't good Not enough. creative Our enough. team was not better than Sporting KC's squad. Mm-mm. I have a question. Noak v. Thornson, is it too early to consider him a flop signing? Yeah. Probably too early. Yeah, probably. But... <laughs> What? what do you think? Yeah, what do yeah. you think? Oh, I think he's the flop. <laughs> we haven't, we like barely saw him he though. Barely touched. I mean, every time he came on, he looked very underwhelming to me. And I think it's just like we've been so bad the past few weeks, and he hasn't had any playing time. So it's not like the coach thinks he's good enough to like change our fortunes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Was he in the squad last night? I saw him shaking hands after the game. So yeah, I think was, he was. was I think he, he was available. on the bench. He was dressed. I mean, he yeah, to... he was available. It's probably too early to tell, but I probably agree with you that what we have seen, it's been lackluster. I feel like Markanic looks good. It's just again, like some of the defensive lapses is it. It it needs help. Mm-hmm. Backline needs help. Do you think um, if Alms? If Alm is healthy, does he start this game? Yeah. I don't know. He hasn't played in so long. It's been like months. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, though. It would be like I would be extremely interested to see us play a 4-3-3 with Celio and Alm. Like, I agree. I, I we think hadn't seen that. We've never seen that. Nope. That is what this play style should be played in. Mm-hmm. I believe that's the best like formation for it. Give me some. Pep, give me some Pep Guardiola four three three man. I mean, that's the thing is that's like some Jurgen Klopp gig and press four feet. Four, that's three, exactly three. what I was gonna say. Yeah. Is like all of the high pressing yeah. teams in Europe, they all play a four three three. Leipzig with plays that. Liverpool plays that. Yeah, and it's like, I guess maybe you need better fullbacks to like push up higher. Yeah, and, and maybe help you play out of the back backs. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um. That's the only thing I can think of. Maybe like, you just need more quality in the midfield like because you have to cover more ground. I mean, think about this, though. Celio, Alm, and Klaus up top. And then you have Leuven, Vaslev, and Blom in the midfield. Like, I like that. They can hold the ball. They can pass the ball. They but is can, there too much space for other teams to work around us, like cut through the midfield? Like, does Gabby Kinda just, like, slice through that? I mean, maybe we. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I I don't know. The it's fullbacks but, have to press up. That's yeah, it. yeah, that's definitely. True. That's part of it. Definitely, they press up, and then the midfield also has to press up. I feel like Leuven is one in particular who sometimes can be guilty of not pressing, probably because it's not really his role. But that would change in a four three three. He yeah. would be required to step into the midfield and get on those midfield players it's immediately. A, no space to Celio, turn. Celio, Celio is the one who I, I would call into question on his Press. pressing ability. Yeah, and I think even he's aware of it, and Carnell's aware of it. Like when he brought him in, he's like, "That's probably why Celio's not starting." If I'm being honest, is because he doesn't get back as much. He's like more yeah. of a. I'm gonna what stay about, up here and But attack. what about Joaquini left wing? I feel like his press is sometimes a little questionable. Also, as well. maybe, yeah, it's maybe, suspect. Yeah. Like I remember when he was the only uh, available striker that we had. Mm-hmm. Like there'd be times where we would just be like sitting in a low block because, like, it's the striker's job to start the press, mm-hmm. and like Joe Keeney would just not start the press. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know. I just I don't know. Not to make this pod positive or anything, <laughs> but uh, Joe like, Joe Klaus is good about that. He is good about pressing and calling people out if they don't. But also, I feel like our press, like a lot of times last game, and I feel like this has been the case the previous few weeks as well, like we'll have some people pressing or like 
even if the whole team is pressing, they'll just be able to play one simple pass and just completely beat, you know, either Klaus or the whole press. Or It lost whatever. a lot of its effectiveness, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were at around 50% possession for this game, which I looked up at halftime and I was like, oh, like KC's, they were around like 63% possession. I was like, yeah. all right, like at least we're playing our game this game. And then by the second half, um, uh, I mean, second half, I'm not going to look too much into that yeah. because we, we were trying to get back in the game. But yeah. Well, we are also like, they just couldn't keep the ball the second half. Like mm-hmm. I, that was good possession that we had. It wasn't just like, the first game when we were passing it around the back in our own half. Mm -hmm. Um, Like it was actually possession that we were creating chances. Not that they were great chances. Didn't have a second guy up there to, to put it away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. And, and I feel like Blom has been a little inconsistent over the last three months as well. Like he's still, he's still had those games where he really shines playing the six. Mm-hmm. But he's also had some disaster class moments where he just doesn't look up to it. He doesn't look like he's going to be gritty enough to to stay in the midfield and did win you, the ball back. Did you feel that way yesterday? No, I felt like he had improved. I mean, yeah, there's that one lapse in judgment. Um, that leads to the goal. Yeah. But I feel like overall he was still pretty good. I agree. Yeah. He had an assist, but that was also kind of lucky. Yeah. But they moved him. they moved him to right back at the end of that game. And I was sitting there, and I was like, ah, like, what if he's our right back next year? And then we kind of had a little conversation about that off air, but I, I can't justify that. Once I thought about it during the game, I was like, I can't really justify taking Blum out of the midfield. The only way you can is if you bring in another defensive midfielder who's like same profile, maybe a little bit bigger. But I, I did like, because we've seen him there a handful of times, red cards and things of that nature. He's he's filled in there. Mm-hmm. And he's looked good. I'm trying to remember what game it was where he was going absolutely crazy at right back after he got sent off. I think we probably still lost away from home. I don't remember what game it was. Um, but I feel like his ball control is really good. His defense is really good. I feel like a lot of his delivery, like just passing in general, maybe not link crossing. Up yeah. yeah, link up play. I feel like is good. Uh, I feel like he would be probably the best. Like if we could clone him, I would start <laughs> him at right back and at CDM. I think he played right back for Kaiser Chiefs. Yep, and I think on the national team, really? I think that's where he'll go play. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He's a. Uh, I hope we can hang on to him. Yeah, for next year. He's got two years. Wasn't on Everton? Contract. Everton was looking at him. Uh, that was a rumor, yeah. I yeah. don't know. Supposedly. Fuck Crazy. off. Yeah, I don't know. He's not quite up for the Prem yet, but... Yeah, no. I think also part of his, like, I don't know, off games, like, I think he's just been tired. Like, he's played so much, so yeah. many of our games, so many minutes. It's very um, true. I think about Leuven in that respect, too. Yeah. He's yeah. really just carried this team. He had not a great game. He just had such yeah. a bad game. Yeah. Everyone's going to get their month and a half of rest, two months of rest. We're playing Champions League football next next year. It starts in the beginning of February. February. So, like, you don't get that much rest. A month off. I don't want to go out there and get embarrassed like 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 Austin FC did. All I know is Lutz sitting at home on his computer right now. <laughs> Bundesliga 2. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my sign. <laughs> pulling up just random leagues and just finding that next that next. He's on player. YouTube watching highlight tapes. Yep. <laughs> He's on Football Manager on his phone <laughs> yes. looking for the next uh, the next big thing. I think that needs to be our move too uh, is to get on Football Manager and just start doing research on all these players to try to help out. Yeah, yeah, we'll just start DMing Lutz all the players that we find. Like, yeah. hey, maybe sign this guy. What do you think? Maybe we'll do a midwinter, like maybe New Year pod where we're like, all right, these are the players we've come up with. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> and then we invite Lutz on. And we're like, all right, have you looked at these guys before? Yeah. I yep. think you should. We'll get on a yeah a FaceTime or like a uh, yeah Skype call, Zoom call, and we'll record it. That'll be an episode. Let's, if you're listening, expect a phone call soon. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a really unfortunate way to bow out of this yeah. season. Um, I think in ten years I'll look back on this and be like, wow, like what a great start as a like MLS career for a team, you know. But right now, this is terrible, and St. Louis is mourning, and I blame 
the players. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely no Carnell out. If I see that yeah, take on Twitter again, you're dumb as fuck. You're so stupid. Carnell not out, but I do think, and I, I'm sure he's got it in his bag too. Like we understand that we're a pressing team, but you you can't be one dimensional to win the league. You got to be able to. If let's say like Sporting KC or another team ends up taking, letting you have the ball and having possession, I would love to see that aspect of our game develop. Yep. Yep. Carnell has given the team an identity, and I don't want to just break him off and bring somebody else. And he's gonna nobody's gonna have any idea what's going on. Lutz isn't gonna be be able to communicate his plan. If we want to keep Lutz around, we're kind of gonna need Carnell, his first head coach, to stick around for as long as Lutz is gonna be around. So I see him being here for the foreseeable. It's kind of, it's kind of the problem that Chelsea has um, with just changing coaches all willy nilly, mm-hmm. changing players all willy nilly. Like if you have a consistent game plan, I feel like. You can't do too bad. Like, it's o- it's overused and overstated, but stick to the principles, and that's what that's what Carnell says all season long. It worked for a season. I think that the Europeans need to understand what a playoff match is. I don't. I think they're they were caught off guard by that. <laughs> like, yeah, no idea. What do you mean playoffs? Like season doesn't just end. I thought we finished first and that's it. We need like a motivational speaker who's had an amazing playoff career. I wish Kobe was alive. He could come back, talk to the lads. Mama mentality. Big time. Job not done. Job not finished. Yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Well, that's a really depressing way to (laughs) cap off this episode, I think. I mean, it's It's, fitting for a depressing episode and a depressing end of the season. Yep. Man. I still love this club. Yep. But you you hurt me. I'm hurt. We've I finished. I think I was the only one to go to four away games. I, we lost all four of them. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough look. <laughs> Oi. All right. Well, um we'll be back next week with a more upbeat episode that's going to have like a more holistic view of the season. I think that, I mean, you can listen to all the 500 St. Louis City podcasts that are out there, and they'll probably be like, well, we did a great job. That's not us. Like, we'll tell you that this was a pretty terrible way to end it, and we'll keep it negative for this pod. But uh, next next episode, we'll probably go through some awards, see who we want, who we think is going to be most approved, talk about who we think we should sign some dps um and as always we really appreciate you guys tuning in to first touch media this has been an absolute freaking blast to do and i feel so incredibly lucky to do this with my friends and um yeah i love that st louis has you're getting too positive man <laughs> i know just right. me. you gotta cut it off that's for next episode all right all right all right well i hate you guys <laughs> actually this has been an awful experience I hate talking about when we lose. Yeah. All right. That's all we got. (laughs) Peace Peace out. out. Thanks for joining. Thank you for watching this episode of Soul of the City, brought to you by First Touch Media and Anchor FM. Make sure to check us out on YouTube at First Touch Media, and all of our socials are at First Touch 314. Thank you for watching.